presenting the deck, and I invite Edan Yago to the stage. Great feedback. Thank you. Hello, 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 sovereigns. So uh, I'm going to let, uh, I'll give uh, Inga a second to uh, bring up the agenda. We have a lot to cover. Uh, it was unfortunate that we couldn't have a um, community call last week. It's, uh, sorry, last month. It's, I think, maybe the first time we've ever had to skip a month. Um, it was due to workload and also there were some, um, you know, just a lot of things going on for the team. So, <clears throat> today we're going to be talking about runes and the runes drop, power. We're going to be talking about Bob. We're going to be talking about additional chains. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin OS and Sovereign Layer. So, I'd like to start with the next slide, which is power. So, uh, there's been a huge... Uh, Inge, if you can go move on to the next slide. There's been a huge amount of work, I think you guys know, that's been done. Um, over the last two, three months. And honestly, we took on a great deal of risk trying to do this many things at once. In addition to the standard maintenance of the uh, protocol on Rootstock, we were also working on bridging and, and uh, runes, developing runes, um, building out Dex 2.0, deploying Dex 2.0, going on to a new chain for the first time. Um, uh, running uh, two different uh, campaigns, one around Power and one around Bob Spice. It was a lot. And um, when you take on that much, there is a risk to focus, there's a risk to execution. Um, and uh, I, I think we can be very proud of um, the fact that we you know, took the risk, people put in incredible sweat and one of the outcomes was the launch of the power rune um this put sovereign on the map in terms of we're now a platform that is going to be trading additional runes in the future but we already have power we've launched power and one obvious thing is that depending on the day i think yesterday was 1.75 million today 1.6 we've distributed as an airdrop as a result of power 1.6 million dollars in value to the sovereign community. So that's a direct benefit. And of that, 525,000, over half a million dollars, has gone to stakers. So it was a lot of work. The community really galvanized around this. Um, the sub squad eventually became the Power Rangers and sort of Sovereign now has a meme token associated with it. The community has a meme token. And there's something cool and new that we're doing that we've never really tried before. Um, next slide, please. Now, I know that French Victory wants to say a few words here, but I'll just say a few things. 40% of the power remains unclaimed. Uh, I encourage you all, if you have unclaimed power, to go and claim your power. But you should be aware there are uh, currently a proposal uh, cooking to do free burn events for the unclaimed power, both to encourage people to claim the power and get involved, but also because a burn event is an awesome marketing and, and communications event and could see the value of power rise even further. Uh, French, you wanted to say some things? Uh, yeah. Uh, so the idea here is, of course, to uh, increase the value of the token. Uh, I would also wanted to cover uh, in this call um the the presence of power in uh, meme coin and our learning there uh, I, it's, i'll say I, I would like to cover it in in a later community call uh, hopefully uh, perhaps even next week or we'll also go over the sip and what it means and what we're suggesting exactly uh, but i'll say that um, just our presence in meme coin we produced a lot of content that tracked very well we were had a very successful booth and during that time the days of the coin and the days after, we saw a significant bump in uh, our trading volume. So uh, that worked. Uh, and uh, we are likely to do it again. Thank you very much, French. Inge, if you can move on to the next slide. So next up, we are going to be talking about the deployment on Bob. 
Uh, let's look at some data first and then let's talk about what we've achieved. So it launched on um, the 9th of uh, uh, May. Um, so far, we've harvested over 4.2 billion in spice, and um, we're actually rapidly increasing the amount of spice that we're harvesting in part because um, of the growing TVL on the DAP. Already distributed 712 million of this, and the expectation is that the vast majority of it will be distributed. Um, towards the end of this month, there's going to be a big distribution to everyone who participated in the Spice One campaign. And the rest, we're looking to use as a tool uh, to, well, most of the rest, to use as a tool to drive further TVL growth and further adoption. The DEX is currently the largest DEX on Bob. Um, so that's two for two, right? So we started out on Rootstock. We helped build Rootstock into... You know, Rootstock was a very difficult project to take on. It was effectively a latent, sort of unused, forgotten chain. We helped build it into the most significant side chain in Bitcoin, and we've built Sovereign to be the number one DEP uh, ecosystem on Rootstock. So it was honestly a bit uh, intimidating to go on to. A, it was we knew we had to do it, but but. but you know, you're trying new things is intimidating. So going on to a new chain was a big deal. And the fact that we've launched a new chain and there too, we are in the lead and that they see us as a, a primary driver and, and, and our partnership with Bob has been getting better and closer over time is a really good sign. Also a good sign is that as a result, many other Bitcoin layer two projects have been reaching out to us to look to get sovereign to launch and and there's even um some offers of of um sort of programs or, or incentives that they would like to, to do to attract us and we're actually in the process of building out potentially a queue now this is a huge amount of work each one of these things is a risk each one introduces additional challenges uh and workload to the dev team but we're we're taking an ambitious approach here um and i think uh, it's very likely that um we, we you know there's an opportunity here um to to actually build on the reputation people have been looking at what we've done for bob and other chains are getting excited so next slide please so uh in spice season one uh we had over uh, 1000 almost 1400 uh depositors there's going to be um a significant amount of additional spice that will be distributed to them, um, some close to uh, uh, half a billion spice. Um, and we've still accumulated additional spice on top of that, uh, which we're going to be able to distribute as incentives. Uh, next slide, please. All right. Now, um, while all of this has been going on, um, the same thing that we've experienced as a team um, for the last three years has continued. Um, we've taken on a lot of risks, and in some ways, we certainly didn't execute with perfection. And there's, you know, stand-up comedians will say, uh, if someone heckles them, there's this old joke, I don't come to your place of work and knock the uh, cocks out of your mouth. Well, sometimes working at Sovereign, it feels like people come to our place of work every single morning when we work and try to shove cocks down our mouth um you know there's a lot of <laughs> every single internet community will have uh negativity uh, sovereign has a lot of a, a lot of really dead take dedicated community and some of that community is dedicated to negativity and there's some really creative fanfics and conspiracy theories about uh you know why we keep getting up every morning for three and a half years and, and trying to build Sovereign. But there are two things that I want to address. The first is the question of is, is Sovereign a success? Because a lot of the time this negativity says, you know, Sovereign is a rug waiting to happen. Sovereign is a failure. Sovereign is all kinds of things. And so I, I, I would ask the question, by what standard should we judge Sovereign? Right? Should we judge Sovereign by the standard of perfection? Because by that standard, we are 
um, a dismal failure. Um, should we judge Sovereign by the standard of the number one DeFi projects on Ethereum? Well, vastly more mature and larger currently uh, uh, DEP ecosystem. And I think by that failure too, we would be considered a, a, a giant failure. However, I think that there are other more appropriate criteria by which to judge Sovereign. The first is our roadmap, our milestones. Do we deliver what we say we're going to deliver? And I think over the years consistently, we've, uh, first of all, definitely delivered on what we uh, put out in the black paper, but we've continued to push the edges, um, continue to put in the time and the effort, and we keep on delivering and shipping. And on that criteria, I think we've been extremely successful. On another criteria, security, right? Is our system secure? Billions of uh, dollars worth of value has flown through Sovereign. Billions and billions. No user has ever lost funds on Sovereign due to a security exploit. And if anything, the system only becomes larger, uh, more complex as a result, and more decentralized, which also makes security much, much more difficult. And so I think that from the perspective of the security perspective, even when we did have an exploit, we managed to catch it and stop it while it was happening, recover the funds uh, in majority, and no user lost funds. So I think on the question of security, Sovereign has been a smashing success. And especially when you compare us to our competition, you know, that brings me to the third criteria, competition. What should we be comparing Sovereign to in terms of the competition? To other projects on Rootstock? Unquestionably, we're number one. Other projects on Bob? There too. We're currently the number one DEX and on our way you know, to building up and, and, and increasing that lead. In terms of the Bitcoin ecosystem as a whole, there's only one project which has ever come close to um, surpassing, eclipsing Sovereign, and that was Alex uh, on Stacks, which was, a, you know, you guys know Stacks. It's a very well-funded uh, uh, ecosystem which provides a huge amount of support. Um, but in order to reach that level of competition with us, they have an excellent team, and I have a lot of respect for the Alex team. But in order to be able to compete with us, um, they had to cut a lot of corners. And the result was a major exploit with their users losing huge amounts, millions of dollars, um, which has impacted the entire Stacks ecosystem um, and, 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 and um, you know, placed the, 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 the value of STX itself somewhat at risk. Um, so on the competition front, um, we've seen off our biggest competitor, and we continue to be the largest DeFi application in the Bitcoin space. Um, so I think on the criteria by which we judge ourselves, Sovereign has been a huge success. And I, I point this out because I want the team to hear it. And I want the team to hear it from you guys. Because unfortunately, it's the people who are uh, negative that are also most vocal. And... I want you guys to know that getting up every morning for three years, pouring your heart and soul into something, and being told uh, in the place that you hang out that what you're doing is shit, wears people down. And so I, I, I want to ask the really silent majority who always, you know, who, who participate, who vote in the SIPs, who, who have been following the project. Um, offer a counterweight, right? Be a little bit less silent. And I'll give you one example. Despite the success that we've objectively had on Bob, a lot of people have been going around and calling the, the Spice launch and the Bob launch a fiasco. That is the word that they've used. And part of the reason that they've said that is because of uh, the fact that SOV dropped um, after we launched, and part of the reason they say this is because um, we delayed it. We, we, were, we were planning to launch in May, on the 1st of May, and we had to delay by almost nine days. So I want to tell you why that happened. I want to give you a little bit of the, 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 the backstory. 
the team were working 120 hour weeks. They were, they, you know, not sleeping in the lead up just to make sure that we hit the deadline. And they had a very complicated task. They were working to deploy on a new chain, which doesn't have the um, testing suite that we rely on in order to make the system secure. So we had to build up our own system of tests. And trying and with a whole new set of technologies. And on the night before we were supposed to launch, which is also coincidentally when the Alex hack happened, Tyrone, who had been going without sleep in order to make this happen, looked through the code and realized that there was a potential exploit. And so we pushed out the deployment to make sure that the deployment was secure. I think that was the right choice. And I think telling someone like Tyrone or all of the other devs who work so hard that this, the result is a fiasco and a failure is, is an unproductive way of encouraging the people who are working so hard for you. Um, so <clears throat> next slide, please. The bottom line, however, is great. The bottom line is that so far we've got two for two. We've launched on two chains. We're the largest and the leaders on both of those chains. And what this tells us is that what we need to keep doing, and this is the next slide, is more of the same. Let's keep doing what we've been doing on bigger ecosystems, bigger and better. Let's continue to expand and be number one until we are not only uh, competing with the largest chain uh, uh, projects in Ethereum, but we are surpassing them as we expect the entire Bitcoin ecosystem to do. And here, speaking about building the Bitcoin ecosystem, we come to uh, the SIP that was published uh, in the forum two days ago, which I have to admit uh, took me somewhat by surprise. In terms of the um, the reaction, uh, because I thought there would be a huge amount of excitement. This is, this is a big deal, right? Bitcoin OS is potentially a huge deal. Sovereign being deeply involved in it is a huge deal. And the fact that there might also be a token allocation, you know, is the cherry on top, but that wasn't the reaction. And, um, uh, the reason I think to a great extent is the way we've been communicating and, and the way I've been communicating. So if we could go into the next slide, I, I have to admit uh, fault and error here, mea culpa. And I think one of the people who helped me understand this was Martin who, who, comment, who, who posted this comment in, uh, in, in the thread. He said, um, you know, the, 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 the response of the community simply proves that there has been a miscommunication. And what I should have said is, hey, I understand that some of you expected Bitcoin OS to be an integral part of Sovereign and directly linked to SOV, but for good reasons, things have worked out differently. And instead, what I said is that what I've been saying again and again is that BOSS is being built externally. Now, I'm technically correct, right? To the people that I've spoken to, the people I've communicated with, to everyone I knew, it was obvious. And so I think this was a blind spot for me. But while I'm technically correct, Martin is right. Martin is, you know, is right that, that, that I, I missed the mark here. So good communication requires uh, transparency. And, and one of the arguments here is that perhaps we haven't been transparent enough. And so I want to address that uh, directly. And if you could go to the next slide. So I think the core, the crux here is that people had the impression that Sovereign itself was building Bitcoin OS in terms of the development work and that uh, um, uh, SOV was going to be the token for Bitcoin OS. So first of all, from a pure facts perspective, Sovereign has not been funding the development of BOSS. It's a separate set of uh, developers. They are not even receiving grants from Sovereign. The only grant we've provided was to Robin Linus, um, who helped uh, pioneer the idea of, of, of BitVM. 
But we have been saying, and I think this is the cause of the confusion, we have been saying that Sovereign is building Bitcoin OS, Sovereign is supporting Bitcoin OS, and we've um, been shilling the hell out of Bitcoin OS. So what does it actually mean that we're building? Well, I think the story here is exciting, um, not just to us, but to other people. And to get something off of the ground, to take something, to even come up with the concept, then to come up with the design, and then to get the people working on it, uh, who will actually materialize it. That's a hard process. It requires a significant coordination. And we've gotten developers excited. In fact, I think we might be the only project where Bitcoin Core and Ethereum Core developers are working side by side. What we initially said when we first uh, announced Bitcoin OS is that it's going to be a collaboration of developers building an open source public good. Not that it would be controlled by Sovereign. And then what we've done is we've gone out and we've tried successfully to get really great developers excited about this project and working to build it with us. But when I say with us, we are supporting, but we're not the central player here. Um, that was the whole goal, to get it to be significant enough that Sovereign would no longer be the central player, that, that Bitcoin OS would take on a life of its own. And we've reached that point. I think the second concern is, all right, but um, why is there uh, now a different token from SOV? And why don't we own all of it? And what about the transparency? Why, why was it never mentioned before that there would be a different token? And the answer there is really simple. It wasn't known. As this project has been uh, taking on form, becoming real, it became apparent that there would be the need for a token. And in the interest of transparency, um, as this uh, became apparent, the first thing we've done in terms of a, a, a public announcement has been to come to Sovereign. The transparency process is the SIP process. That's one of the key reasons we have SIPs, which are uh, not directly related to changes to the, the protocol. It's a way to bring the community together to discuss something. And so the first set of people uh, to hear about the BOSS token are the sovereign community. And it goes beyond hearing about it. It's also, there's been an, an offer tendered for sovereign to be a stakeholder in, in BOSS. And I think this is an extremely exciting opportunity. But because I've had um, a bit of a struggle clearly communicating this, I actually want to go back to the community. And so, um, next slide, please. I think actually the person, you know, I've seen really good comments one of the really good comments that I've seen is from someone I don't know, who I think has showed up relatively recently to our community, the solution. Uh, so I'm calling you out the solution. I think you, you communicate very well. And if, if you can reach out to me, I would be happy to try and see if we can get you more involved. But this is what the solution writes. He says, Sovereign is trying to be the incubator, the Kickstarter of Bitcoin OS, not the sole owner. That's the point. And for this thing to be successful at all, it has to have a diverse array of parties with a financial stake in the network and ample developer support. And that is something that we're on the path now to achieving. We're still very much early on, but, but it's happening. Then he says, Sovereign will reap incalculable benefits just by being the leading roll-up when this thing launches. It's indirect benefits are what really matter here. And that, I think, is such a great way of putting it. Bitcoin roll-ups are a multi-billion dollar opportunity. Our goal is to be number one, sovereign to be the number one platform within this ecosystem. And our goal, therefore, should be to launch and do the same thing that we've been doing and are basically practicing almost in the kiddies pool right now by launching on these different platforms so that we can launch on Bitcoin OS and be the leaders in Bitcoin OS and help do to Bitcoin OS on a much grander scale what we did to Rootstock, which is turn it into the winner and the 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 boss token the direct benefit from the boss token while it may be very significant right 
uh, is, is the gravy, it, but it's not the meat. So I think the last part in terms of the communication that needs to be understood is on the next slide, which is we've been talking about two different things and maybe the distinction hasn't been completely clear. There's BOS, BOSS, Bitcoin OS, and there's sovereign layer. And so I want to make the relationship as clear as possible between these two different things. Sovereign layer is the sovereign rollup. We anticipate launching our own sovereign rollup so that sovereign itself is as sovereign as it can be and that the token um, will be a canonical Bitcoin token built on a, on a Bitcoin rollup. SOV will be its token and currently there's a program to provide 9% yield in that canonical token to SOV stakers on top of the, the yield that, that SOV stakers earn anyway. BOSS is a multi rollup super chain. It is the infra upon which this world of Bitcoin rollups can be built. Its token is BOSS, and there's a pending SIP related to it. By way of comparison, there is some similarity here to the relationship between base chain, which is the Coinbase rollup, um, and the most significant rollup in the Optimism rollup super chain. And Optimism has its own separate token, which is the OP token. One other question that has been raised <clears throat> is around the token allocation. I'll come to that in a second, but I see that someone has asked a question. So let me just see what that question is. Ah, how can you help if you're uh, not a developer? An excellent question. I'll come to that in a moment. Um, so if we can go on to the next slide. All right. So uh, this is a possible token distribution of BOSS. Maybe, no guarantees, no promises. And I say that because I don't want us to, you know, be, find ourselves two or three months from now with a different uh, uh, distribution and then it became, but this is what's currently being envisioned. Um, it is envisioned that the team dedicated to building and contributing to the success of BOSS across the team and across many years will have 10% of BOSS tokens potentially allocated to them. An additional 10% uh, would be allocated to a longer term ecosystem fund. In total, this represents 20% of the tokens. Another 20% of the tokens are anticipated to be available for sale um, to users around the world so they can directly have a stake and this will help us kickstart the community. An additional 16% to strategic and venture partners, um, one important kind being exchanges so that BOSS um, has a higher chance of being listed on, on significant exchanges. What that leaves is 44% to be distributed to partner projects, effectively the rollups that would be building on Bitcoin OS. Of that, a quarter is currently earmarked, and should the SIP pass, would be earmarked immutably for sovereign. So while my other aspects of this distribution might change, that part would not. And what that would do is make sovereign the single entity with the largest stake in BOSS. And so I'd like to go to the next slide. I think the goal here is to keep doing what we've been doing. If we can continue to um, succeed enough that we're, that other projects look at us, that other chains and, 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 and Bitcoin ecosystems look at us and say, look, we need to get sovereign on, then we're doing the right thing. And if we can launch and be number one or you know number two on each of these, then we will de facto continue to widen our reach and also widen our lead and continue to be the kind of place that really significant developers want to come and build with. Um, which will open us up to opportunities like Bitcoin OS. And then when Bitcoin OS launches, then I think the game is truly afoot. And our goal must be to replicate what we've done in Rootstock, to replicate what we're doing on Bob and replicate what we will do in other places on what I think is likely to be the most significant smart contract ecosystem, or at least one of the top three, will be on par with Ethereum and Solana. 
and then we will be playing in a different league. So right now, we're trying to build up the skill set, the reputation, the muscle memory to do that, uh, and to do it well. So we've got to keep going. Uh, and um, with that, I think I'd like to open it up to questions. Um, there already are a few. So from the Power Rangers group, um, Someone says, since I just realized what Yago said a minute ago, Sovereign is my absolute favorite tool, not just in Bitcoin, but in my entire life. I use it daily. I leverage this platform to help my family advance and thrive. It's a real addition to my life's projects, and I cannot imagine a better pillar to lead on. So thank you to all the contributors. I would pay a lot to get this kind of tool service if it didn't exist. And guess what? It's free. Thanks again. Um... And please keep this in mind when the dirty trolls come and puke their filth when Sov doesn't satisfy their gambling thirst. So thank you very much, Nux. That's really gratifying to hear. And the truth is we don't hear it a lot. And Bitocrat and um, Legosi both ask, how can they contribute to, to Bitcoin OS and how they contribute to Sovereign if you're not a developer? And I think one way that you can do that is that, right? I think it helps us. I think we're human and we need the encouragement. It helps. So that's one way. Another way is to let other people know. Um, just those two things, I think, can do wonders um, uh, to what we're doing. Capitalist42 asks, are any other teams contributing to building Bitcoin OS? Um, so right now, it's a ragtag team of really great shadowy super coders. And some additional people who are involved and some projects who are looking to contribute. But there's not really that much that can be contributed by third parties yet. Um, partly because we don't want to release the code yet. And um, partly because um, it's just, you know, it's, it's super hard, deep in R&D right now. But there are a number of roll-ups uh, that we're talking to or projects that would like to be roll-ups that we're talking to who potentially would contribute and launch on, on Bitcoin OS. Molo's question. Sorry, what is Molo's question? Oh, okay. There's a lot of... Molo's long... question is regarding um, uh, power. I answered him. He also posted this in the Power Rangers group uh, uh, yesterday, I think, and I answered him and he discussed everything. Uh, we can get into this now, but should we focus on the Bitcoin OS question, perhaps, and get to power if there's time? Sure. There is a public devnet for Bitcoin OS. Uh, public as in it's available to anyone, but we haven't been advertising it yet. There are a couple of those roll-up teams that I told you about that are playing around with it. Um, it's going to be going through a lot of upgrades over the next few weeks. Um, what I can say is that we've um, uh, stolen a lot of code um, from Polygon because they're the leader. And one of the strategies that has worked for Sovereign is stealing from other ecosystems and bringing to Bitcoin. And so actually with Boss, there is a similar approach. Find the best uh, and, 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 and steal shamelessly. Uh, where possible and where not, do great innovation. Um, all right, Slidehammer is asking, can I explain the mechanics, the pathway behind how Sovereign's 10% boss share will drive value to the SOV stakers? I think that's a really great question and one which unfortunately I haven't seen discussed very much. Uh, I actually thought that would be the most um, discussed question in the forum. Um, ultimately, that's up to Bitocracy to decide. My sense is that there's three possible distribution points. One is exchequer, so that um, funds can be used for adoption, funds can be used to, to continue to, 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 to fund sovereign. Another distribution would be to SOV holders, and a third distribution would be to SOV stakers. You guys, I think, know, based on things that I've said in the past, my... Um, General tendency is to think that the 
bulk, the weight of things should go to SFB stakers. But I think that this that is an important discussion for the community to have, both before this SIP and after. Um, so um, I I uh, don't haven't yet made up my own mind on this, and I think I'd like to see a lot more discussion. Capitalist42 asks, how is the progress on the Bitstock and Grail bridge development? Bitstock and Grail is part of, is, is, these are core components of, um, of Bitcoin OS. I don't feel comfortable saying too much about how the technical progress is, 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 is progressing. It's progressing well, is what I can say. Um, and um, hopefully we'll start to see things in the wild as a result. Now, I, while I'm waiting for additional questions, I'll point out that there's some other things that I think are important. I think one of the other questions that has been asked here is how can we contribute? I think it's important that we discuss as a community how should we be promoting uh, Bitcoin OS and the relationship between Sovereign and Bitcoin OS for the good of both. So that's another question that I think would be good in the forum. Like how should we be presenting the, the relationship between these projects? To make sure that Sovereign is not too associated with the project, but also not unassociated with the project because i think it, it it can be narratively powerful for sovereign to be somewhat associated with bitcoin os another important question one of the things that the boss team are asking us to do is to launch their project and launch their token i think we need to think how we would do that and i would be interested in a debate and and, and proposals on what the most successful way, right? We all have had the experience in participating in different crypto projects or participating in Sovereign. What would be the best way to launch a new project of this kind? Obviously, that will ultimately be done by, you know, some kind of adoption team and the Sovereign adoption team would play an important role there. But I think that there's a view that there's the perspective of potential users and people who are experienced in the crypto space that could be extremely valuable here. So that the outside, the third person party perspective can be extremely valuable. Third question is, will BOSS be issued as a rune token? <clears throat> um, not decided yet. Um, and the reason it isn't decided is First of all, we're not sure that runes is the sort of winning. It, right now, it's a great uh, token protocol for Bitcoin. But I actually think that they're around the corner. There could be better ones like ZK coins. Runes is very limited in terms of the programmability of it. Now, um, Bitsnark could potentially help fix that. So there might be a version of runes that we could use. But it would, I think, be important I, th I think basically it's very context dependent. Uh, when BOSS launches, which will only be in a few months, the world may look very different. Um, and so I think a decision of exactly which um, a protocol standard to use, token protocol standard to use, which should probably be made closer to that date. David asks, what does Bitcoin OS benefit from Sovereign for the 10% gives? Marketing and support has already been established. <clears throat> um, I think, okay, so there are a few yeah. things here. First of all, uh, the, the primary thing is actually not marketing and support. The primary thing is decentralization. Uh, we want to avoid a situation and, and, and the developers I uh, want to avoid a situation where um, this is launched like most shitcoins are launched, right? Some kind of centralized group. Um, there's an idea that's been floating around of, of sort of piggybacking on decentralized or, or on already decentralized 
um, projects. And if you read the SIP, one of the things that they describe is, you know, the problem with uh, actually crossing the, the, the decentralization chasm. So that's the primary thing. Beyond that, it's community and marketing. And Sovereign has a significant community. And what would be great is if that community started getting more involved with Bitcoin OS. I think one of the things that is being hoped for is, you know, Bitcoin OS has, like, for example, its own Twitter account. Pretty dormant right now. Seeing more followers, seeing more activity, starting to see this community sort of begin to help create the, um, the hardcore, you know, the, the early founding uh, uh, DNA of the, of the bus community would be very helpful. Um, I will say that we need to be careful. Um, if there is, there has been particularly, uh, you know, I think every time there's a sip, there's a lot of negativity. This one got quite a lot of negativity. We need to be careful that our community to third parties does not seem um, hostile, um, because that that will make us less attractive, not more. Um, I hope I answered your question, David. Traveler is asking spice for power holders. Looks like a less um, work in progress, not final. Not final, says French Victory. Will we be seeing more contributors to um, Bitcoin OS um, maybe being more public in the future? Um, probably yes, but I want to point out Bitcoin OS is nothing yet. Um, it could disappear tomorrow. Uh, it could fail for a million reasons. It could hit a technological roadblock. The devs who are working together could discover that they hate each other's guts. Funds might not be raised. This is something new. Uh, new things are fragile and difficult. Uh, Boss could turn out to be nothing. It could disappear tomorrow. Um, so any answer I give you about anything to do with Boss is tentative, right? We would like to see it and expect to see it. Solve significant technical problems, raise significant capital, become a major narrative in the Bitcoin and wider crypto space. Uh, become an extremely valuable project and an extremely valuable technology. But none of this is set in stone. And to the extent that Sovereign can help make that happen, we should. Capitalist42 is asking, how decentralized is Sovereign by SOV holder distribution? The answer is remarkably decentralized. CK has uh, done this analysis um, several times. He does it on a periodic basis. Um, I don't have slides for it now, but I, we, in a previous community call some months ago, we actually went over it. Um, there's no single group that have, uh, 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 not even as a group, have a majority. So um, the team do not have a majority. Uh, in sort of investors don't have a majority. Um, uh, people who came in through Genesis, um, the Genesis sale, <clears throat> Uh, and the origin cell do not together have a majority. And people who have come in later do not have a majority. People who have earned help, it's, it's very, very distributed. Um, and CK, if you're on the uh, call, uh, maybe you could chime in. Hi, everyone. Yes, I'm here. Uh, I have nothing prepared for this call, but maybe I will release some reports on our channels later today or tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, David asks, would Bitcoin OS be available for pre-sale buying for SOV stakers as a way to get on board before others? I think it's definitely an option, something to consider. Uh, David, maybe you can either create a new thread about that or add it to the uh, existing uh, zip thread. Regarding Bob, David further asks, the price going down and only LPs being severely damaged. Is there any comment on this? Um, I don't know exactly. I've never understood the 
SOV price. To me, it has seemed <laughs> in the early days, it seemed massively overvalued to me, which I think it turned out to actually be massively overvalued. I don't think a, a six month project should have been valued at $8 billion. Um, and also massively undervalued ever since. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, we need to, I think with, as we expand to more chains and, and are able to go beyond the rootstock audience, um, we become, we'll, we'll expose ourselves to more people. There'll be more liquidity. Um, as we add additional trading pools in the decks, which trade against SOV, there'll be more liquidity. Um, as we grow our audience, potentially partly through the narrative of Bitcoin OS, more people should become aware of Sovereign and Bitcoin OS, uh, Sovereign and SOV. And ultimately, what we need to do is, um, unfortunately, and, and this is something you sort of, we've resisted, we resisted early on, and I think it was a strategic mistake. We, 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 we avoided going to the uh, big centralized exchanges early on. Right? When our valuation was, was high, it would probably have been very e or much easier. We had you know, significant volumes. They probably would have been much more interested. Um, but we didn't, partly because we wanted to keep the trading on, on Sovereign, and partly because we were young and stupid, and by that I mean ideologically opposed to centralization. Uh, and we wanted to, tr to offer a true alternative to centralized exchange. I think we overestimated um, our ability to do that uh, in the short term. Um, and I think we underestimated the degree to which being on centralized exchanges would, would, would expose users who are on centralized exchanges to decentralized alternatives. And so now it's a bigger battle. But as we grow, I think we will become more attractive. And I can say that some of the larger exchanges have actually, uh, on their own initiative, reached out to us recently. And so we'll do what we can um, to, to, to correct that mistake. Because I think, unfortunately, the case remains that centralized exchanges are the path to mass token adoption, um, even today. But David is still writing, so I'm going to keep responding to it. So for context, he says, uh, me, people locked up liquidity and it only went down after. Could Bitcoin OS funding somehow spill over to the liquidity benefits of Sovereign? So yes, I think Bitcoin OS could spill over. And this is one of the reasons that I wanted to try and get Sovereign as attached to, and, 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 and you know, why I wanted people to know that Sovereign is starting, you know, is, is the first primary com contributor to BOSS. Um, and as for, you know, token price, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not a trader. I, I, I'm a, I try to be a value investor <laughs> and I don't understand why prices go up and down uh, besides animal spirits. All we can do is keep building value uh, and make sure that we stay alive uh, so that the value can be realized. On the note of staying alive, a question that hasn't been asked, but I think is actually important. We periodically try to, uh, once per quarter, um, publish um, um, Exchequer's financials. Um, but we haven't done that. Uh, we didn't do that in April. Uh, so we should do that soon. But just so you guys know, the Exchequer has been extremely responsible in shepherding the funds available to Sovereign. And so, um, you know, uh, a year ago, we presented that we probably had about two years of runway. And six months ago, we presented that we probably still have six months of runway. And due to the increase in Bitcoin price, where a lot of our treasury has been held, uh, we are still at a point where we have around two years of runway. So just so you guys know, uh, we believe that the first rule is survival and the Exchequer has been extremely responsible with regards to that. Um, any plans to improve stablecoin liquidity in Rootstock? Okay, so. view is that trying to fight the battle on rootstock is try is like trying to hold an untenable position on a battlefield uh you you're you're exposed you're weak you have no strategic advantages my view is that bitcoin backed stable coins and stable coin liquidity in general is one of the first places we will see benefits to having our own roll up 
where we can establish what is the most significant uh, stablecoin and <clears throat> where we can uh, uh, generate additional interest and demand. I'll also say there's a roll-up project that we're currently talking to which is focused on stablecoins. It's focused on high-speed transactions, optimization for stablecoins, and also one of the things they want to do is allow staking of stablecoins. And there is a conversation to have that be a Bitcoin OS roll-up and for the sovereign dollar to be sort of like the one of, if not the only staked uh, stable coin. So that itself could be a very, very strong driver of demand. Again, this is just a conversation uh, that has been had. Nothing has materialized yet. Everything could go wrong. But the battle continues. And we'll, you know, hopefully, if we keep doing our jobs, achieve these things. Uh, the reporter says, new to the community, any discussion on targeting BCTC, BTC holders for liquidity? Um, yes, we've seen several projects uh, claim to be Bitcoin Layer 2s that have brought in significant amounts of BTC. Um, Bob is one, but it actually brought in relatively less. The most successful one launched from the West brought in about 125 million in BTC, and that was Meso. But the biggest successes so far have been um, actually Asian projects. One of which is doing very poorly right now, but did very, very well for a while, which was Merlin Chain. And the other is BitLayer. What we've seen is that um, a lot of the liquidity actually is Chinese, uh, or more generally East Asian. And um, so one of the challenges is going to be to be able to build a platform that is going to bring together the liquidity available in the West and the liquidity available in the East. No one's cracked that nut yet, and it's something that I've been thinking about a lot. Um, Core has 3,000 BTC, that's true, but it's a much smaller amount than, 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 than the others, and actually Rootstock is close to 3,000 BTC as well. All right. Uh, will the Zero Protocol be deployed to Bob Chain soon? No. Now, the answer is no, because we've got other things that we want to deploy before. And also because there are improvements that can be introduced to Zero, which will reduce redemptions. And um, we think that for Zero to be very successful, that would need to happen first. Uh, we have, we have well, the solution, I see you've joined us. Look, uh, I would be happy if you DM me. Um, I'd be interested to know if, if maybe you can... Um, can, can, can contribute your thoughts a little bit more because you, you tend to, for, I've seen you write a few things and you st tend to sort of say the things that I, I, I would want to say as well as you do. Um, and he says, in the interest of positivity, I just want to say that I believe Sovereign is building the most secure, prescient and principled manner of almost any project in the crypto space. Its tech is fascinating and you and the whole team, while not perfect, are doing a phenomenal job. Sovereign is definitely not a failure. It is first place within the Bitcoin DeFi space, which hasn't even really started yet. I think Bitcoin OS will be monumental. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Um, all right, guys, we're coming to the end. I'm going to take one or two more questions. And then I think we should uh, bring this call to a close and continue the discussion in the forum where we can have longer form and more easily recorded uh, 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 conversation. So I see that Travis Trades and David are both typing questions. I'll seek to answer their questions and then um, we can bring this conversation to a close unless anyone has any other topic to raise. So Travis I Trades would like to add though that uh, if uh, there will be a demand we can do uh, another call uh, an AMA next week where we will address uh, more questions in uh, you know in voice. So Travis Trades asks, I don't know if this has been asked, but has there been any mention of how we know what devs are helping or will be helping on Voss compared to SOV? So we don't have competition. I think Travis Trades means competition of focus. So right now, none of the core sovereign devs are working on, um, on Voss. 
and um, we think that it's likely to stay that way. First of all, the Sovereign Corps devs are more than busy enough. And second, the type of skill set and experience of building an application layer versus building the infrastructure layer are very different. Um, and so while there is overlap and there are really great developers uh, who can contribute a great deal from the Sovereign Core team and possibly will uh, in the future, right now that's not happening. And then finally, David says, if Bitcoin OS becomes a thing under the sovereign banner, can we somehow influence things like you mentioned, like having sovereign dollar stablecoin or other exclusive perks? Um, who would decide these things with the last word? And the answer is a definitive no. While we can attempt to do that um, by offering the best products and having the best relationship and sort of being on the inside track, it's really important that Bitcoin OS maintain neutrality. Because otherwise, Bitcoin OS will not succeed, will not be able to compete against um, projects that are able to claim a higher degree of neutrality. Um, and so it's important that we understand that Sovereign will not have um, decision-making power over BOSS and will not have a privileged position de facto. It might have a privileged position through its own efforts, but not through some kind of... Um, structural thing built into Bitcoin OS itself. All right, guys, thank you very much. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Um, let's keep trying to do it better and bigger each time. And, um, and let's jump into the forums. Stay sovereign, everyone. So long, everybody. Follow us on thank Twitter, SovereignBT Suite. Um, and keep kicking ass and uh, help us in uh, reaching more sovereign individuals. Take care, everyone. Over now.